and welcome to a brand new episode of the KOB Podcast. I'm Tyler Trumbauer, your host, if you don't remember, because it's been a while since our last episode, but Happy New Year to you, and our gift to you is the return of the Kistler O'Brien Podcast here in 2024. Still going to be on all those same channels, the Kistler O'Brien Fire Protection YouTube channel for the video feed. If you're looking for audio only, we'll, we are wherever you find your podcast, Apple Spotify, etc. And we're excited for the new year with all new episodes, new guests, some returning as you'll see in just a matter of moments, but a lot of great topics to discuss as there are changes abound and new things coming up on the horizon in the fire industry. So settle in, subscribe on YouTube if you have not done so already. We'll be dropping episodes regularly in 2024 and beyond. So thank you for joining us in the past and returning with us here in the new year. As we kick off the new year, I want to welcome in our first guest of the 2024 calendar year. A guest that has been on the podcast. I think this is your third time it now, is. Tom. It we is. can't get enough of him here on the KOB <laughs> podcast. And that's Tom Fantasia, our suppression system sales representative here at Kistler O'Brien. Been with the organization several decades now. He's got tons of experience and expertise in the industry. And the reason why we have him on is there's always something new to talk about when it comes to suppression, especially in the last 12 to 18 and 24 months, Tom. Yeah, so absolutely. first off, welcome back to the episode once Thank again and the, the podcast. Appreciate you giving us a few minutes of your time. But also now, uh, let's start to dive into this. We have tons of content out, out on our website and our YouTube page about the changes in the industry. We have two previous podcast episodes we talked about. It's probably some of that information's changed a bit. Some still remains the same. But the overlying storyline of the changes of manufacturers not doing certain things, some um, governmental agencies getting involved in things. So kind of quickly give us the, the 30 second synopsis of why there are so many changes. And then I guess we'll then go into what's the current state of everything as it is today. Okay, um, well, the, the changes are, um the reason why there are changes is, um, in my opinion, uh, um, it's survival of the industry. Okay, so uh, clean agent. Um, you know, there's uh, there's arguments on both sides of the fence as to the economic feasibility versus the benefit of having it against the risk involved in not having it. Um, that being said, um, the fire protection manufacturers uh, that are serious about suppression um, are constantly evolving to either A, uh, safeguard their position in the market, grow their segment, um, or in some cases, uh, it's, it's a matter of survival uh, for the future. Um, that being said, a few months ago, we discussed some of the regulatory changes regarding the AIM Act and HFCs, whereas um, they started to uh, police the production of HFCs. So that trickled through to the suppression business, suppression industry, and the manufacturing of the chemical agent, um, its regulations, et cetera, uh, created a huge spike in cost questions about availability and you know uh, at the time uh, fortunately we had an alternative uh, a product chemical name FK-5-1-12 uh, known in the market at the time as Novec 1230 manufactured by 3M was our alternate our solution to a regulated HFC since then well uh, the manufacturer of Novec 1230 by its trade name 3M discontinued the production of that product uh, primarily because of some of the components were related to a family of chemistry that was designated as a forever chemical and had uh, that had huge environmental effects uh, so they discontinued the production starting 2024 uh, which in general was not a good thing for the fire suppression industry mm -hmm. however uh, there is information supporting the 
chemicals in the makeup of the FK5112. Um, it's unfairly grouped in a, a family of chemistry that's horrible for the environment. And now we have other manufacturers, in fact, uh, that created uh, an opportunity for other companies to start the production of the chemical. Um, and it has actually made it more competitive. So we've seen a slight decrease in the cost of FK5112, uh, reformulate it so that it can be flowed and listed in a certain manufacturer's cylinders, etc. On top of that, the HFC business, the FM200s, HFC227EA, has made a rebound, a 180 if you will. The market is flooded with recycled FM200. Okay, so uh, we've got a lot of legacy systems out there utilizing FM200. Uh, we can now purchase recycled FM200, uh, remanufactured, uh, cleaned up, mill spec, and now certain suppression manufacturers have listed the recycled version of HFCs to do first fill and offer that as a viable uh, option for your fire suppression, which is makes it much more economically friendly than the regulated HFC that will eventually dwindle and disappear. Right. Uh, the environmental impact remains the same for HFCs. There's always a concern about global warming, etc. Uh, but uh, history of the industry itself proves that the chemical agent is already out there. It's already manufactured. So the companies that are shifting to the greener, more environmentally friendly chemicals um, now have FM200 systems that they're decommissioning. So there are groups of recycling companies that are gathering that chemical agent, uh, cleaning it up, filtering it out, and storing it as mil spec uh, HFC 227 EA. Uh, we can put it in brand new cylinders, we can do first fills, and it's brought the price of having FM200 or uh, a new FM200 system back in line with historically oh, you know, where a system price would, would be. Um, so that's, that's completely different information than last time, which is good for us to have a topic to talk about. Um, but it's, uh, it's a testament, you know, to the uh, fire suppression industry and their ability to, um, you know, regroup, bounce back, and, and stay ahead of the curve um, to keep uh, uh, systems like these, to offer systems like these that are safe for occupied areas, uh, that are electrically non-conductive, uh, there's no moisture, there's no cleanup. Uh, more economically feasible. Great, Tom. Appreciate all that. And like you said, tons of new information, which is why we keep making videos about this because it's always changing and we're trying to keep our customers up to date. So let's kind of take apart some of these, these key pieces that you said there in that opening conversation. And that's essentially that it sounds like what there was a lot of concern of what could be availability, what's the next step. It sounds like the market has responded and there's now at least a clear path for the near future on what can be put in place for customers that need these systems. Well put for the near future. So our last podcast, uh, we were talking about the near future, which wasn't looking as promising <laughs> right. as it is now. Uh, so yes, for the near future, uh, there's some stability. There's uh, uh, pricing is in check. Um, you know, it's, it's become um, a, 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 an option again, as far as economically speaking, to protect your critical systems uh, with clean agent. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that and, you know, we'll, we'll stay on top of it. Um, you know, with the, the manufacturers that we represent are on the cutting edge. So they bring us forward with the, the information in the industry and uh, 
you know, it, it's, we're looking forward to 2024. Sure. Speaking of the manufacturers that we work with, our partners, they're on the, on the cutting edge. People consider Kistler O'Brien a leader in the fire protection industry. So a lot of maybe folks you deal with on a regular basis or others that are just hearing, you know, kind of trickles through the news of a little maybe headline here about suppression, a headline there, suppression. I know you're fielding those questions on like, what do I do? Do I start to budget for something in the future? Right. Do I need to do something now? Is this something that is a uh, five out of five concern right now, or it's a simmering concern, but nothing major. What is kind of your message to those individuals at this present time with the knowledge we now have? Uh, I think my, my message now is uh, you've got to call us, okay? So um, their sense of urgency is our sense of urgency. So if they have a, a project in the future and they've got, you know, an engineer, an architect working on it, that's, you know, preliminary, but that's great. You know, a lot of times we get plugged in at that phase of the project, um, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We help the customer and we helped it to architect and engineer and, you know, end result, I believe, is a better product. Uh, if, if there's, sometimes there's an event and, you know, companies want a solution, protection, uh, in, in a more immediate fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, you, you got to give us a call and we can talk about what your options are. Uh, and you know how we could implement that solution and you know today economically speaking um, I believe it to be more feasible than in the past FM 200 that's something that it seemed like was getting a lot of steam and then like you said maybe there was some uncertainty around it now the recycled refurbished options are coming into play so kind of what do you see with that? Is that going to be coming more and more commonplace in 2024? Or how do you see the, the flow of that continuing as we progress in the evolutions of the suppression industry? I think that the FM200 industry will kind of stabilize. Um, I think inevitably it will slow the growth of the FM200 as an, an option for clean agent. Um, but what it does, it, it gives people who have FM200 systems the ability to uh, expand it, modify it, we can still flow it, it's still available. Um, unlike the earlier version of an HFC, which was Halon 1301, which you can't flow it. You can't make a room bigger or smaller and, and change the nozzle or any of that. Uh, so, you know, that'll safeguard what was put out there and, and you know, buy companies some time. Uh, we don't have a crystal ball. I get asked all the time, when will, when will they ban mm -hmm. FM200 or HFCs? And the answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't banned Halon. True. And so, how long that's been going exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, not having it banned, uh, plus having enough of it in the recycling market mm -hmm. to sustain the industry, uh, if you have it, I would say, generally speaking, you shouldn't be alarmed. Uh, if you want to modify a system, you've got an option at this point. Um, and if you have a discharge, you know, now, you know, we're, we're kind of in line with the cost of all chemical agents, where if you have FM200 and you have a discharge, you don't necessarily have to pay more versus if you had a discharge with the greener FK5112. So again, you know, it's I think HFCs in general, not just the fire protection industry, are something that possibly could slowly work itself into extinction. Sure, and I think that bringing up um, Halon's a great example, right? That was what I was going to pivot to: is those that want some type of prediction or timeline. Like we've been here before in the fire protection industry right. where there looked like there was going to be some type of uh, clamp down from government and regulators about a certain uh, material, Halon, and that actually officially is, hasn't been on the books, but you know, the market has adapted and kind of pushed itself out. So I think if anything, you know, I don't want this to be the official stance and that's why you're not saying it, but others on the sidelines could predict a similar storyline here as well where sure. there are other manufacturers pivoting other substitutions cost stabilizing to where over time the evolution will push that to the sidelines to where you necessarily don't need an official action to to rid it of what's going on in everyday fire protection right 
Yeah, so that's something that I think to keep in mind. And honestly, as everyone is seeing now, you got to talk to Tom. You have to talk to your local providers. Tom's on the edge of this, talking with manufacturers regularly, is getting updated literature that can be shared as well as, as what's going on here in the industry, Tom. So let's kind of talk a little bit about 2024, right? So that has been the last six months of 2023, right? Correct. We kind of know what happened. And a lot happened in those six months yeah, since we last talked, true. right? So maybe we need you on more often. Um, going into 2024, based off of what you're hearing and, and what has evolved over the last half of 2023, I'll make you kind of maybe do somewhat of a crystal ball here. And, and what could you see in the near term for 2024? Is it just, hey, more stabilization, you can expect a little bit more consistency in costs, um, or is there some kind of rumblings you're hearing where there may be some other twists and turns? Or is right now, early 2024, hey, things aren't as crazy as they were 12 months right. ago. We should just enjoy that for now. <laughs> I, I think that would be the case. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I would say in you know the calendar year of 2024, I would expect things to stabilize um, and not necessarily uh, have a huge growth in the clean agent segment. Um, however, um, you know, the regulatory uh, effects, um, environmental effects, et cetera, are, are, we're kind of like where we need to be with them. Um, there's, there's nothing that's uh, critical that we need to address. Um, and, you know, I, I would say that 2024 would, would be a stable year. And, you know, I know that um, certain manufacturers are working on new technologies for um, other applications other than clean agents um, for specific types of, of hazards. Um, but uh, stay tuned, you know, when, when we get something new, uh, love to come back and, and inform our customers and, and keep them on the cutting edge as well. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll ask one final question here, Tom, and kind of pivot to this now that it sounds like, hey, things are a little bit more predictable, reliable in the marketplace as far as what a customer could get from a manufacturer, the costs that they're going to get, and not to mention, which we haven't really talked about, the whole supply chain, you know, a whole other regulator, uh, other thing outside of regulators could also impact the suppression industry, like it did every industry, it did. right? But it's those sure. have now alleviated a little bit as well. So going into this new year, uh, you know, with a lot of new construction going on or, or all kinds of data centers and new type of uh, environments out there that would need suppression systems, what should they think about now when they're like, hey, listen, maybe I was afraid to make this move or I was afraid to do this project because of that. Kind of what's your message to them now going into the new year that, hey, listen, like we know, especially in the Lehigh Valley where our headquarters are, like there's a lot of data centers coming up. There's a lot of different warehouses of different materials that may need this type of system compared to other buildings. What's kind of your message to them, which maybe is something you're talking about daily with different uh, contractors and other stakeholders right. you deal with as they these projects come to your desk? I think the, the thing, you know, today would be that, uh, you know, if you've got a, a, a data center or you're looking, uh, considering a clean agent system, uh, things are stable. So we're, we're, it's not nearly as volatile as it was in the past, number one. Number two, um, because of what was occurring in the past and is occurring today, arguably, um, you know, it has kept the price for these types of systems in check. And as I had mentioned, you know, the, the chemical agent FK5112, we've actually seen a, a decrease mm -hmm. in the price of the agent. So it's economically feasible. Um, so I would say that again, you know, if you've got any questions, um, to, to give us a call, you yeah. know, we can, we can work something up and you can look at real information um, right. as part of your, uh, your thought process. And information that is probably not, that is still going to be accurate 20 minutes after you send it over <laughs> yeah, to them, right? I think, that's the, I think that's the big thing here. It's a good time to have that conversation. Right. Obviously, whenever you, you have that in 2023, there was a lot of, as you said, volatility and uncertainty. I think you can have a little bit more predictability as you're planning these projects and your overall fire protection needs when it comes to suppression in 2024. Right. Well, one thing that I can always predict is you're going to bring some great insight, Tom. You yes. did that today. Appreciate your time as always. My pleasure. And, and we'll, uh, you'll keep us updated as things change. I will. I would like to mention sure. one other thing as it, it's currently impacting a project that I'm working on. 
Uh, some of our projects are from 2021, 2022, have been on the books. We've been working with certain customers, certain uh, engineering, uh, architectural groups with an FM200 spec that six months ago was taboo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, possibly an expansion of an, exist an existing system, a new system. We're back in line now. Mm -hmm. So we've got a mil spec FM200 product or I should say HFC 227 EA, which is the chemical name. Uh, we, we have a product, it is mil spec. Um, we can install new, we can retrofit old. Uh, so if you have those types of projects, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And now we have the solution that we had that we thought may have gone away, um, but we're back in business. Very good point, Tom. Appreciate you bringing that up. My and, pleasure. And uh, thank you once again. And thank you all for tuning in and joining us for the first episode of 2024 of the KOB Podcast. Check us out on YouTube and all the audio platforms where you get your podcast. We'll be back in just a few weeks with another one, but we hope until then you subscribe and you can check out our old episodes as well. You'll hear more from Tom and some of those as well. Until next time, I'm Tyler Trumbauer with Kissler O'Brien Fire Protection.